Hello everyone. I cannot tell you how delighted, privileged and honored I am to deliver this oration called as the Keshav Dev oration in memory of the father of uh, Dr. my good friend Dr. Jyoti Dev. Keshav Dev as he was properly known was actually his real name is P. Keshav Pillai. And he is one of the greatest literatures in Malayalam. He has written numerous books, articles, and essays, which have made him immortalized in Kerala's history. One of his most well-known works is a book called as Odeil Ninna, which was made into a movie in 1985. And I remember seeing this movie as a child with very famous actors like Satyan and Prem Nasir and so on. In fact, it was so popular that in 1971, the film was remade in Tamil with Shivaji Ganeshan as the actor. So you can imagine uh, what uh, a place uh, Keshav Dev has in Malayalam literature. He is uh, a great social worker and was very much concerned about the plight of poor people. In fact, that is the uh, story of uh, Odeil Ninna as well. Uh, so to deliver this oration in the name of such a great man, I consider it as one of the greatest orations that I have uh, ever delivered. And I uh, play my respects and my pranams uh, to the name and the soul of uh, Keshav Dev, Mr. Keshav Pillai. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Jyoti Dev, uh, who's not only a very good friend, but also a collaborator in many, many projects. He is one person to, on whom I can depend on anything. You know, if I have a job which uh, I feel needs to be done, I can just give him a ring and say, Jyoti, I want you to do this. And Jyoti is always there uh, to get this done uh, for me. So Jyoti, thank you very much for your friendship. I have uh, personally come to Trivandrum for several of your meetings. You have honored me earlier, and I'm very grateful to you for honoring me yet again. And your meeting, JPEF, is a landmark in diabetology in India. And year after year, you get some of the best speakers uh, to deliver talks. And uh, I'm sure this year's is also uh, going to be no exception, and it's going to be remembered for many years to come. The topic you wanted me to talk on is the adoption of time and range, India specific recommendations. And I'm very happy to talk about this because continuous glucose monitoring and time and range is something which is very close to my heart. So let me uh, delve straight into the subject by tell, telling the audience that a few years ago, life was very simple for the diabetologist. All we had was what we called as the triad a fasting blood sugar, a postprandial blood sugar, and HbA1c. And many labs did not even measure the postprandial. All they did was a fasting and a HbA1c. Now, today, we know that the field has changed so much. We call it as the glycemic hexad. So apart from the fasting, the PP, and the HbA1c, we know that hypos are given a lot of importance, and nocturnal hypo is particularly given importance. And that is where the concept of GV or glycemic variability comes in because you can have people who are having normal fasting and normal postprandial and normal HbA1c, but their glycemic variability can be so huge that they could be hitting peaks and troughs all the time and getting into severe hypos in the night. And now that has been recognized as a very important marker. And therefore, this concept of glycemic variability or time and range have become very, very important. And that's why it's called as a glycemic hexar. Now, what is glycemic variability. Glycemic variability refers to fluctuations in blood glucose levels. Both the peaks and the troughs of blood sugars uh, can be measured. Uh, if you measure a, a tracing which is there throughout the day, you will be able uh, to find out what is the glycemic variability. This can be within a day. It's called as intraday or it can be interday. So one day you can have a lot of variability. 
or within a day you can have a lot of variability why is it important because it leads to oxidative stress and it can lead to also severe hypoglycemia it's also linked to some complications of diabetes as well now to illustrate this point we are showing here three cases uh, who have a hba1c of 7% so all these three cases have 7% a1c but if you look at the time above the range now if you draw a line like that a red line to show the lower limit and a yellow line to show the upper limit of glucose we want all the blood glucose levels to be within those two points but if it exceeds that it's called as the peak and it goes below that is called as the trough and so we don't want too many peaks and we certainly don't want too many troughs now if you look at these three people all with hbnc of 7% one person has 100% within this range one person has 63% within the range and the third person has only 18% within the range so obviously all three of them have the normal hbnc but the the first person with the 100% is much better off than the person who's over having only 18%. So I hope you have understood the concept of glycemic variability. You may say can we measure this using SMBG? Yes and no. Yes because you can get a snapshot of what exactly is happening when you check the blood sugar let's say in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening so you will get different points it's like taking one photograph in the morning one photograph in the afternoon one photograph in the evening so you get to see three pictures it's of course better than taking one picture but it still is not like a video it doesn't tell you exactly what happened between those points for example how do you join these two points do you join it just with a straight line like that or do you join it after it goes up and then comes down or do you join it after it goes down and comes up there are many ways you can join a, a graph and that is why we call we use what is called as the cgm or the continuous glucose monitoring now when you use a device which can give you continuous readings of blood glucose then you can now actually draw the graph instead of extrapolating it from two or three points now you know where the sugars are going for example it crosses that upper limit we know that it is outside the glycemic range or the time and range and if it goes below we know that's the it's gone time below range so by doing such a device which has become very handy nowadays you can get a continuous this is almost like taking a video recording of your blood sugars so moving on to what is time and range tir the time and range refers to the time spent by an individual between two set points normally it's set as 70 lower limit and 180 upper limit for some conditions like say pregnancy you may set it even tighter 70 to 140 for example so anything above that is called time above range anything below range is called time below range and the more time in range you have it is better for you it's like having a hbnc below 7 this is just illustrated here a little better where you can see that in part of the time is uh, in range but then you can see some of it is actually above range in this particular case nothing is below the range so obviously this tells you when you do that somewhere around 10 am the sugars are going high so he's obviously having a very high carb breakfast if he cuts down his carbs for breakfast you can probably get it under control so this time in range and the cgm concept is very useful as a behavior modification tool how is type and range measured as i mentioned using continuous glucose monitoring now there are two types of continuous glucose monitoring i'm not going to go into that there's one is called as the real time or the rt cgm you put it you also have a reader with you and at any time 100 times a day 200 times a day without drawing a drop of blood without poking yourself even once you can get your continuous readings throughout the day and that's a real need for uh, for people with type 1 diabetes for example where before and after every insulin before and after every meal they can check their sugar levels there's also what is called as the uh, intermittently viewed or the icgm where you don't get so many readings you can do it retrospectively also put the scan get it back after two weeks and then you can scan it and get a complete reading and say oh on tuesday morning why was your sugar high on sunday night why was your sugar high oh i went to a restaurant and i ate something although in this covid times you don't go to a restaurant but if that happened you can say oh that's what happened oh you missed your insulin dose that's what happened here so all that you will know by doing continuous glucose monitoring and as an example of that i'm just showing a, a case here an actual case here which i would like to call as case a 
And you can see that this gray zone marked here from uh, 80 to 140 in this case uh, is where the sugars should have been. And that's called as a time and target. But you can see that this particular individual for this whole week that has been studied, his time and target is only 39%, 12%, 0% on some days. So he's really not under control at all. Very little time below target for this particular case. You can see one or two red patches there, but most of the time is above target. So it's very clear that whatever treatment this take, patient is taking is not sufficient, either the diet or the exercise or both, or the insulin dose or the tablet dose or the timing. Something has to be changed to improve this time and range. Anything above 70% is considered good. Now let's look at case B. Here is another case who is near perfect. You can see that the time and target varies from 80%, 84%, 100%, 100%, 100%, and the overall is 94%. So this is the kind of patient which you and I would like to treat and keep it under good control. Now, it's uh, common sense that case A is more likely to develop complications, whereas case B is very unlikely to develop either microvascular or macrovascular complications. Now, how to calculate this time and range? I told you that we want at least 70% of the day to be under control. If you do mathematics, you'll find out that that works out to 17 hours of the day. Out of 24 hours, if 17 hours is under control, that is 70% of the day. Now, we don't want too much to be high and we don't want too much to be low. Low, we don't want more than 4% of the day. That means even a few minutes, we don't want it uh, to be uh, below. And of course, high, as low as possible. You don't want as much high, uh, avoid as much high as possible. Now, how do we decide the time in range? The time in range has to be individualized. For example, for a 30-year-old person and an 85-year-old person, you cannot have the same time in range. For an 85-year-old person, you may say, if you get 50% of your time in range, I'll be very happy. Whereas for a 30-year-old person, you may say, I want 100% under control because you've got a long way to go. So it should be individualized. It may also change over time. For example, after a heart attack, if somebody has come, you don't want any hypo. So you may relax the control and say, I'll have less time and range for you now. Now, this is a little complicated slide from Betelino's group, which shows that for type 1 diabetes, the time and range shown here in green is different. In older people, it's brought down to 50%. In, uh, in type 1 and type 2 patients, around 70%. But in pregnancy, you can see we want almost 90% of the control uh, to be within the time and range because pregnancy is a very important time when you have to control the diabetes, okay? And that's what is shown here, that for uh, type one and type two, as compared to older people where even 50% time and range would be sufficient. Now, there are global guidelines, and these global guidelines, of course, are very useful. But then in the Indian context, there is always something little different about the Indians, apart from the type of diabetes, which is different, the body weight is different, and so many other things are different. Socioeconomic status is different. Everything is different. But then there are also diversity due to cultural differences, dietary differences. People fast. There is Jain fasting, there is Ramadan fasting, there is Hindu fasting, there is Lent fasting, and uh, uh, Sikh fasting. All kinds of times at different times of the day. There is fasting and feasting. There are festivals which come in. There are so many things which come in in India, which is a little different from the cultural, uh, uh, the, the, the findings that we find in the West, for example. And therefore, based on that, there might need to be uh, some modifications made. And those are summarized here. There are ethnic differences, true ethnic difference. For example, we lose beta cell function much more. We get type 2 diabetes at a much younger age group. I already mentioned the cultural religious uh, uh, practice. There are also psychological behavior which is very different. For example, if an Indian loses even five kilos in weight, everybody who sees you will say, what happened to you? What happened to you? In the West, they won't even talk about it. If you have lost weight or gained weight, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a taboo to talk about one's weight. But in India, everybody will tell you, what happened to you? You have lost weight. You have lost weight and so on. So these cultural differences also make a difference to you. And of course, I don't have to talk about the high carbohydrate diet. We eat carbohydrate for breakfast, carbohydrate for lunch, carbohydrate for dinner, and carbohydrate in between also, all the time. Now, there are also additional considerations to be taken into account, and all these that I described here uh, just emphasizes and underscores the need for having India-specific goals. Now, it is here that a series of publications have come 
uh, both from our group as well as from Dr. Jyoti Dev's group, and also combined with Dr. Jyoti Dev, we have published. Here is uh, one uh, group of uh, studies which we recently published, uh, where we showed the intraday glucose variations in a very large number of our uh, patients. We have also looked at uh, you know patients with and without before Voglibos treatment. Now, Voglibos is hardly used. AGIs are hardly used, alpha glucose inhibitors are hardly used in the West, but we have used it and we have shown how good it is to control the diabetes. And then, of course, we've written many other articles. We have shown in different clinical situations how they work and how retrospective data is also useful and so on and so forth. Now, these are several of Dr. Jyoti Dev's uh, papers. Uh, and I know that uh, even right now, as we speak, uh, uh, he is having papers at the ADA is presenting a lot of his work. Now, this is a very important paper on 825 type 2 diabetic patients who are treated with the 14-day sensor. And he has also brought in various guidelines uh, for treatment. And many of these guidelines are actually used in India today. Now, there is one paper which uh, we collaborated of Jyoti Dev and I looking at does the use of CGM and TR improve diabetes control? And this is published in Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics. We looked at both type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients. And what we found was that in type 1 diabetic patients, there was actually a bigger difference from the control, almost a 0.5% reduction in A1C by using the uh, ambulatory glucose profile and the continuous glucose monitoring, uh, whereas in type 2 diabetes, the differences were less. It has been clearly shown that time and range is related to microvascular complications. For example, for every 10% better time in range, the prevalence of retinopathy and microalmuria nephropathy uh, comes down significantly, 64% reduction in retinopathy and 40% reduction in microalmuria. If you just take your uh, time in range from 60 to 70% under control, that's the kind of improvement that you're getting, much more than for 1% reduction in A1C. Now, this is a paper which uh, is uh, been submitted publication and it's uh, under review and publication in, in JAPI, where we, for the first time, we have introduced a concept of what's called as the intermittent use of continuous glucose monitoring. And Dr. Banshi Sabo's idea it was, and he took the lead uh, in this, and uh, Ranjit and uh, Jyoti Dev and many others contributed uh, to this. And what we showed is a very unique uh, concept. Where do you use it in type 2 diabetic patient? You can use it in many, but we are given 10 conditions where you can use it. The newly diagnosed patient is starting treatment. Uncontrolled diabetes treatment is being altered. When you're starting intensive lifestyle modification, infections, perioperative control, gestational diabetes, children with type 2 diabetes, patients on steroid during COVID, very good example of that. And what is interesting in this paper is we have shown three different scenarios where you can use CGM. Now look at the first, the first one, the strategy one. The CGM is done for two weeks after the clinic visit. So this is strategy one. Patient comes at this particular point to us and then we do a HP1C, we find it's bad, sugars are bad. Now we put the CGM for two weeks. And then at two weeks, we tell them, send the uh, sensor back to us. And we'd like to make changes in the dosage adjustment. It's a classical strategy, which all of us use. Then the second strategy, which we propose that you can use before they come to the clinic for one week, let them put the CGM. And we'll see what is how it is uh, with the treatment that they're already on as is where is condition now we change based on that one week's reading that we take we change the treatment then for the next one week they again wear the sensor and now we can see how much improvement has come so we'll know how much improvement the change in the treatment that we have done will do for the patient the third strategy is patient finishes the two weeks before coming to you and brings the entire two-week profile and based on this two-week profile you now change the treatment to my knowledge, nobody has ever mentioned anything like this. And I think it's for the first time in the world that we are proposing this. And we're hoping that this will get published soon in JAPI and it will become a standard of care for treatment of intermittent uh, use of CGM. So the key messages regarding time and range that I'd like to give you is that there is a need to go beyond just the fasting and the postprandial. You must look at continuous glucose monitoring and time and range. Lower the time and range is associated with increased risk of complications and opposite, the higher the time and range, lower risk of complications. In India, we have to personalize CGM. I just gave you some examples of how we can use intermittent CGM because most of our patients who use it are type 2 diabetes. The type 1 diabetes is much less common in our country. And customized TAR target should be used for children, older people, high-risk individuals, including those who are planning to get pregnant 
or who are going through the CGM. And with that, I would like to thank everyone and just put up the slide uh, because immediately after this meeting, uh, we have another update coming up where Dr. Jyoti Dev is very much involved in that as well. And this is our uh, meeting. We usually have it in the same month. Jyoti Dev has it in the first week of July and we normally have it in the last week. So on 30th July, 31st July and 1st August, I'd like to invite all of you to register and take part in this diabetes update. And with that, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Jyoti Dev once again and uh, once again uh, express my gratitude to him uh, for this great honor of asking me to uh, deliver an oration in his very famous uh, and much respected uh, father, Mr. Keshadev, who is actually a legend in the whole of Kerala and in India. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, it was, as usual, a wonderful, excellent uh, oration. And uh, of course, this is the most important oration in our meeting. And uh, all of us, the entire team of JPEB is very grateful to you. I can see so many questions from the audience. So I will ask one or two questions to you, uh, sure. Mohan sir. Uh, so time and range is an emerging concept. And the time and range is now endorsed by all the scientific organizations. And hence, uh, probably we are all the first to perform time and range in most of our patients, irrespective of the type of diabetes. So what are the challenges uh, India are facing? Because in India, uh, the penetration of uh, the glucose meters are even less and uh, the use of continuous glucose monitoring, of course, it is slowly increasing, but it is still very, very low in numbers. And uh, with the current of COVID-19 pandemic, the diabetes has definitely increased and uh, you have described in detail about the entire entity. So, so what are the challenges uh, in performing TER, like how can we overcome these challenges according to the top leader and uh, the doyen in the field of diabetes in the country, sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Yotev. I think it's a very, first of all, uh, you know, thank you again for this oration. And uh, I was uh, mentioning uh, in my talk about ODL, the movie which I had seen when I was a child, and later Shivaji Ganeshan, uh, Babu, he brought out another Tamil version of that. And I mean, it's a great, I can't even imagine that I'm standing here and uh, delivering an oration in your father's name. He's such a great man. And uh, even before I knew you, I had heard of him. Uh, so it's, it's a great honor. So thank you so much. I'm again, very humbled and honored uh, to deliver this in his name. Now coming to your question, the time and range. Um, see, the concept of CGM is not known to many people. That's the whole problem. Now leave alone, uh, you know, other specialists who don't know anything about it leave alone general physicians who don't know about it. Even among diabetologists, they say, okay, who should we use it on? You know, they have no clue who to use it on. I said, you should ask yourself who you should not use it on. Is there any definite contraindication not to use? Because, okay, it is, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. We're not spending, you know, even like a scan or, uh, you know, for a CT scan and for other things, we need to spend so much more. This is half the cost of that, a quarter of the cost of that. And it's giving you so much of data. Today in these COVID times, if you are able to keep the sugars under good control, I would say there'll be no mucormycosis. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, recently the, the data on mucormycosis was released by our health minister, union health minister. Some 41,000 cases of mucormycosis, of which 64% had diabetes. And the other 36% have not been tested at all. So they may have pre-diabetes or unknown diabetes and so on. I, I would say at least 80, 85% have diabetes. Imagine if all of them had their time and range. There will be no mucormycosis at all. No, one huge thing we could have prevented. If you now compare how much you're spending on mucormycosis treatment as compared to 2,000 rupees for a small sensor, there is no comparison. So I think we should tell people what is the value of this. Secondly, if we can prevent complications, it is extremely uh, good. Uh, so I think that's the reason why it's not taking up. Of course, cost is a small factor. It was a small, uh, this thing of wearing it for 14 days. Some people don't like anything stuck on their body. But these are very minor uh, issues. Uh, I think the biggest problem is a physician and the diabetologist who's not interested in it, who's not passionate about it. But you and I are different. You know, we are passionate about learning about glucose, learning about learning time and range. And if there's anything with our technology, we'll adopt it because we believe that it's very, very useful. But not all are like that. And therefore, I would say, less than five to 10% of even diabetologists use this uh, regularly. So the first thing is to teach them the value of this. And as far as my experience is concerned, 
as far as patients are concerned it's a great motivational tool it's a great educational tool when they eat something and find it's going up next day they eat less and say see i brought it down so what more what we you and i cannot do the machine can do and it can teach them the graph will teach them so i think once you put it as an educational behavior modificational tool it will take off uh, sir there are a lot of obstacles in promoting a device in our country because first of all the policy makers with the government need to be convinced so that they promote it and uh, the same experience is shared by the government doctors because none of these are available in the government sector and we are spending maybe 10 times more for treating the complications including weaker mycosis and the people are dying so how can we convince the policy makers i think first thing is to show results for example for every 10% increase in time in range we are saying 64% reduction in retinopathy and 40% reduction in microalmeria so these are huge you don't even get it with 1% a1c is like 2% a1c results if you're talking about so that's really really huge that's the first point second point i think one of the groups which we can uh, talk to is the insurance people because you know if they kind of support this let us say they support once in a year at least for a type 2 patient to see that it's under control their you know their payouts will go down i'm sure that there is a case to be made uh, that if you just wear this and you keep it under control if you're able to cut down retinopathy nephropathy neuropathy by 20% 30% imagine how much they will save imagine if some of those patients reach uh, renal failure and they need dialysis transplantation then then it's all in lakhs you are talking about okay and over a period of time probably crores that you're going to spend and you know what is that so we are being penny wise and pound foolish you know to spend this 2000 rupees we hesitate so much but when you have renal failure you are paying 3000 for every dialysis three times a week and uh, you know 12 times in a month and we are prepared to sell our house and to do everything but to put this small thing we hesitate a lot i think that is why we are typically being penny wise and pound foolish so i think once we explain it to the policy makers to insurance people and tell them the value behind this once a year let them pay for it you know so the patient doesn't have to pay and that is how in uh, you know middle east and other places uh, it is done a patient doesn't pay anything if i have worked in oman and about another place they just come sign go off, and they get the sugars done hbnc done everything done everything is covered by insurance and so they don't, don't even the medicines are covered by insurance so what happens they come four times a year five times a year so they paid for that they already they have paid so what happens their control improves everything improves their hbnc improves time and range improves so finally they don't develop complications in india we are you know not since everything is out of pocket and nothing is paid for so people hesitate hesitate they won't come for tests they won't do then we tell them you know this i'll avoid that i'll avoid so everything you have to calculate the money so i think a change and complete change in policy has to come where by controlling early first 5 to 10 years you can bring down the burden later see you and i have always been talking about a complications free india if you want to achieve that this is the only way that we can do it there's no other way thank you thank you sir the message is very loud and clear and uh, thank you so much thank you so much for your precious time and uh, thank you so much for delivering the most special oration case of the oration in our ninth year of jpf and uh, i still remember your book making excellent sex habit and recommend all our audiences to go through uh, your book because that is uh, one of the greatest motivations for all of us treating diabetes thank you so much and please stay healthy and that is a motivation for all of us thank you sir thank you jyoti yeah. dev and god bless you and congratulations on a fantastic meeting please keep going from year to year your uh, the quality and the quantity improves so my very uh, uh, good wishes and blessings to you. Thank you sir thank you thank you